I don't, I don't know what I'm looking at right now. Of course, we're in smoke season. Preface, we're in smoke season. We don't know what's true. Half of everything we see is not going to be true. But right in front of my face is something that makes me want to vomit all over my desk right here. Kirk Cousins is expected to really explore his options in free agency. Probably because things didn't go his way. When that happens, a player says, you know what? You don't value me. I'm, I'm out of here, right? I'm going to go explore free agency. We knew that's a, a risk, right? But this report right here, and this is one of like five, six of them out there. This is not just one random report. There are several people reporting this right as we speak. The Vikings are considering free agent quarterback Sam Darnold to be their bridge quarterback if Kirk Cousins leaves Darnold could be their answer. Alert. Alert. Panic mode initiated. I, again, smoke season. This would be a debacle. This is as bad as, if not worse, than the Jimmy G situation to LV last year that I warned everybody about. Um, Darnold? Darnold? Again, we're in smoke season. I know, I know, but this is this is full panic mode. If we've got this guy throwing footballs, he's the guy supposed to deliver footballs to Justin Jefferson. This better be all fabricated. There better not be an ounce of truth to this. The fantasy football show begins right now. Live from the FantasyFootballShow.com studios. It's the Fantasy Football Show. Live! Live! Monday through Friday, 8 p.m. Eastern. Smitty is also live whenever news breaks. From the FantasyFootballShow.com news desk, here is your breaking news. I couldn't have I couldn't have went live at a worse time right now or aka best time to talk about something crazy that just dropped. But but this first of all, Fields to the Atlanta Falcons is the most likely predicted scenario as of right now. Vegas is putting this situation currently at a crazy odds in favor of Atlanta Falcons. Minus one thirty, Steelers three fifty, Bears seven hundred. Again, Vegas doesn't set necessarily any sort of uh uh, indication level of, of comfortability in these types of situations, but certainly something that we're getting excited about. Justin Fields to the Atlanta Falcons, the Falcons to the moon if this happens, but boy, are we here to let panic settle in just a little bit right now because on screen is one of the most worrisome reports I think I could possibly come up with. Uh, wh what's going on here? Is is Why is my screen no longer... Showing. What is going on here? There we go. There we go. Justin Jefferson. Panic, panic, panic. Not saying anybody should be knee-jerk reacting to this situation at all in your fantasy league. Uh, you should not be avoiding him at number three overall in your best ball fantasy underdog fantasy leagues. Use code SMITTY. I'll drop the link in the chat right now. We'll be doing so many drafts in the offseason during the midnight hours, during the graveyard shift. We'll be talking about this topic in, in all kinds of topics leading into drafts and such and i'm not saying anybody should be detouring or altering their plans or trading away jj or not accepting a, an absolute fantastic jj trade that's on your lap in your lap right now i'm merely saying that if this happens we are in full freaking panic mode um i don't know with my system if, if, if do i have any delays right now because my system is acting Pretty crazy right now. Come on! I'm gonna when I go to this next screen, I might not leave it for a second. Let's see. There we go. There we go. Uh Kirk Cousins is fully expected to explore his options. Apparently things did not go as well as 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 originally reported that they were potentially close we heard different reports they weren't close they were close they want to bring them back the vikings very adamant this is the guy they want back and then these reports which again 100 percent could be crap um it's smoke season but if this were to unfold we have to talk about it we have to talk about it for for clifford out there keyboard clifford that thinks that this isn't something that's 
even remotely possible of happening, you're going to be in the comments. We're not opening phone lines yet, by the way. You're going to be in the comments looking around, trying to say, Smitty, this is BS. This ain't going to happen. I'm a Vikings fan. There's no way in hell that this is going to happen. If that's you thinking that that's this situation, you can just come out here and say, oh, we aren't going to talk about it. You got another thing coming because when things float around news wires, your boy Smitty is here to save the day. And it's whether I shoot it down, tell you the, the, the level of comfortability I have with the report, tell you how much I like it, how much I hate it, what happens if this does go down. Let's just say this went down. And and, and, and we're in smoke season, and you gotta, you got to wonder, how could anybody really know if Sam Darnold was on their radar as their bridge quarterback? Is this some dumb report? that got stretched and, and and pulled and manipulated and sculpted into something that made somebody's report feel better, their news clipping feel better, their radio show or podcast felt a little more spicy, and then everyone's saying they're chasing clicks, they're chasing listens, etc. And then people kept running with it. It's kind of like telephone tag. You say, hey, my dog ate a pickle pack of pi uh, pickle pepper pizza at Costco on a Saturday evening. And then the next person's like, your mom took my dad to a pizza shop and things happened. And then the next person's like, your car radiator overheated on your grandma's front porch. And then by the time it gets all around the circle, th the sentence isn't even close to what it used to be. That's kind of what happens with news, especially in smoke season. So it's hard for me to imagine that somebody has the blueprint of what the Vikings plan to do if Kirk Cousins doesn't go anywhere. And it, I find it really hard to believe the odds are astronomical that what we're hearing now in the predictive stages of the offseason is what actually unfolds. Like if there was an odds percentage chance of even if the Vikings wanted Sam Darnold potentially as the bridge that it all unfolds that way is astronomically low. So pump the brakes. Don't make any stupid decisions or don't leave any trade offers. Uh, if you can exploit somebody that's reading this and panicking, I'd probably take the chance nine times out of t 10 or maybe 11 times out of 10. I, I don't think Sam Darnold is in their thought process. And I think that if they were going that direction, they'd see so much heat and, and negativity that they, they would recognize it and they would detour. Uh, wait a minute, our fans are not happy. Like, what are we going to do? Not to mention they could go this route and then draft Michael Penix Jr. Go this route and draft Bo Nix, and he really just becomes the backup. If, if for any reason they sign him, bring him in early in free agency, and everyone's thinking this is their plan, they're still going to attack quarterback. So I'm here to kind of calm the, the storm more than anything. But this is being reported in so many different places. I had, I had to come out here and talk about it. Not to mention, not only did I have to come out here and talk about it, I have to, I have an obligation to talk about it from a worst case scenario so you know how I feel. If Sam Darnold was the quarterback, the signal caller, the field general, if we could even give him that title no matter what, and, and he was the only one responsible for getting Justin Jefferson the football, Justin Jefferson would struggle so much to produce elite wide receiver one numbers. He would probably still somehow, some way get yardage. Probably wouldn't see touchdowns. It could be a four or five to six touchdown season. It could be a maybe still a hundred reception season. Maybe still 1,300, 1,400 yards. But we're talking about wide receiver five, six, seven, eight. If he's got Sam Darnold as his only line of, of support. There's no way he could survive at 14, 13, 10, 11 TDs, 120 receptions, uh, 100, uh, 1,400, 1,500, 1,600, 1,700 yards. It would be literally a 13, 1,400 yard season and four or five touchdowns, maybe 95 to 100 and two receptions. Not the worst season in the world. He figures out a way to do anything. I'm just here to paint the picture if this worst case scenario unfolded. If, if Armageddon, Doomsday, if this actually happened. But I'm here to tell you, there's almost little chance they don't at least draft a J.J. McCarthy, a Penix Jr., or a Bo Nix if this is their plan to walk into week one. Maybe if Penix Jr., Bo Nix, McCarthy, whoever they draft, don't beat out a quarterback like this if they bring this worst-case scenario win. Think about it like from the perspective that I come at this uh, of the angle of you can't walk into the draft with nothing. 
You know, you it, you got to have some backup plan because what if all the quarterbacks get picked off? You, you just can't predict it. You can't go Rattler at number. Now, granted, you're most likely going to have one of Penix Jr., Bo Nix, or McCarthy falling to this draft slot that is going to be the number 11 overall. There's just almost zero chance that all five of the quarter... Well, I, I shouldn't say zero. There, there's a good shot that all that, that one of the five quarterbacks is available. But what if you don't like McCarthy? What if you don't like Bo Nix? What if you don't like Penix Jr. that high? Then you're forcing it. You might have to trade down, whatever. But either way, you can't leave it to chance that you get the guy you want and are able to start this player. So there is there is some contingency plan. I think what people are missing in these reports is that it's a contingency plan. He could be a backup quarterback just like he was in San Francisco. A very, very uh, petrified Peter I would be if this was my backup quarterback because I think he's garbage. I think him and Jimmy G, they share bunk beds uh, at the camp, at the, at the camp of no quarterbacks. These guys won't produce. Uh, these guys are not starting caliber quarterbacks. They're at camp by themselves. No one's drafting them. They're getting picked last when they're picking teams at camp. These guys are sitting here by themselves on an island. Island called not a top 32 quarterback in the National Football League. On an island called all five rookies are worth starting over Sam Darnold. This would be a debacle. This would be a debacle. Um... But it's a contingency plan. Very poorly worded projected contingency plan by all the media news outlets out there that are reporting on it. I'm here to save the day. Watch Clifford, Keyboard Clifford, who we got right here in the chat. Keyboard Clifford, I don't know if this is, uh, <laughs> who is this? Who, who, who changed their name to this? Cliff, uh, Keyboard Clifford says, hey everyone, get a load of this guy. Um, I, I, I think uh, Clifford and all the other news media people or, or the, the people that hate all the news and, and smoke season are going to be in my chat in my comments saying this is a lie this is for clickbait this is something that isn't going to happen can't believe you're believing this because they don't watch the show if you watch the show you know i have an obligation to report on this and i'm going to give this a thumbs down in terms of being accurate i'm here to talk about the worst case i did that i did my job if this happens armageddon if this guy's the final QB on the roster, the only QB on the roster minus some garbage that's that's about his level or worse, we're in trouble. JJ's in trouble, we're in trouble. But I, I can't fathom or believe that the Vikings would not approach the Penix Jr., Bo Nix, McCarthy with Sam Darnold approach. And that I'm a little bit more okay with, obviously, because I love Bo Nix, I love Penix Jr., um, I'm not too fond of McCarthy, but it's better than nothing. Uh, McCarthy and Sam Darnold would still be alarming to the tune of maybe I don't draft JJ in my top four. Maybe he's five, six, seven, but I don't think I like McCarthy and 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 a Sam Darnold combo. And to be frank with you, Penix Jr. and Bo Nix, I love them for the future, but there could be a slow first month of football for Justin Jefferson. Jeff Justin Jefferson might be a great buy low target if he starts off the first month kind of flat. Okay, but flat. No touchdowns, good, good yards one week. Week two, no yards. You know, 20 yards, 30, 40 yards, bad game. Everyone's like, oh crap, JJ had a bad game. Third week, 80 yards, no touchdowns. Fourth week, touchdown, 20 yards. Like something like that. If he starts off flat, and people say, whoa, he failed me last year too. What's going on? Is this Mike Thomas 2.0? You, 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 you jump in and swoop because it's not Mike Thomas 2.0. JJ is the number one, number two wide receiver, one of the two in the National Football League. He is so good. He can survive almost anything except for he's not going to get the touchdown production, which will in turn hurt him if this is his quarterback. But again, my panic level is moderate. Moderate just because, you know, the rookies, even if it's Penix Jr. or Knicks, presents a problem for, for month number one. Not to mention, what if they don't work out? What if Penix Jr. and Bo Nix are not what we want? It happens all the time. And then you got this guy as your backup plan. The, it's a moderate risk level, even in the best case scenario of there, no, there being no Kirk Cousins. If it's no Russell Wilson, no Kirk Cousins, no trade up in the draft, no fields in a trade, and you're talking about literally 
rookies only that are available to the Vikings at the number 11 overall pick mixed with guys like Darnold, then it's a moderate risk level. It's a moderate panic level because JJ probably cannot produce his normal numbers. He just probably can't. But at the end of the day, I think there's still a very strong shot that Kirk Cousins re-signs with the Vikings. I think he will go explore what's going on out there in the market, but maybe he doesn't find that the market is, is conducive to what he wants as people believe it will be. Maybe coming off the Achilles tear, teams will be very excited, but they won't be willing to pay what they probably should be paying for a guy like Kirk Cousins, even coming off an Achilles tear. Keep in mind that no team wanted to pay for Lamar Jackson a year ago, and look how good he did this year. Even though he did not finish and conclude the season like everybody wanted him to like a lot of people thought he could with the defense and and the, and the good play and the 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 better passing uh skill sets that he kind of like honed in on and became a a well-rounded quarterback if flowers exploded they they lack i think the running game really really hurt him and i think that's why they attack henry barkley or josh jacobs one of those three guys will be a baltimore raven mark my words but nobody paid for Lamar. No team wanted him. Lamar Jackson was franchise tagged. It cost two first rounders. Two first rounders to get Lamar Jackson on roster. Nobody wanted it. Not one team. Not one team wanted it. So who's to say, even though these teams all need a quarterback, who's to say any of them are ready to pay up and give the bag to a recovering Achilles torn quarterback that is aging? And becoming older every day. Ziggy, how old is Kirk Cousins? Ziggy, how old is Kirk Cousins? Kirk Cousins is 35 years old and was born on August 19th, 1988. <sighs> August, he turns 36. Jeez. He turns 36, people. He turns 36. This is not that crazy of a scenario mixed with the rookie. It's a crazy scenario without a rookie. Minnesota would be nuts to not draft a rookie quarterback at, at a number 11 to go with uh, Sam Darnold or a Jimmy G. God, I hope we don't hear Jimmy G next. If we hear Jimmy G, I'm going to lose my mind. Maybe it's Russell Wilson. I can kind of envision Russell Wilson. I'm okay with Russell Wilson and JJ. I, I, I definitely, Jimmy G and, and Darnold, if those are the actual starters, we might as well rock, walk right into a brick wall in week one and, and say when's week number number 18 coming up so we can reset this thing there's just no way jimmy g or sam donald can make jj the best that he can be or even remotely close it's like handcuffing both of jj's hands behind his back then handcuffing those handcuffs to his legs and then putting them in a box and handcuffing the box and locking it up then duct taping the box and then asking him to go be a top one wide receiver it's not going to happen he needs a rookie. He needs something. Now, I can't wait to see how many people come in and say, this ain't happening. I can't believe you're about... I can't, I can't wait for people to not understand the importance of breaking down the rumors. I can't wait. I can't wait, especially in the comments. I can't wait. Probably ignore you, but I can't wait to see it. It makes me smile. <sighs> Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Sam Darnold. Unreal. Okay, so let's pretend this is a, a Fugazi idea and concept and, and just garbage post. Let's go over to this one right here. Packers will move on from uh, David Bakhtiari. This is fantastic. Bakhtiari, man. He, he, can, I, can anybody say this in unison with me? Bakhtiari being moved on from by the Packers. Can we all say this in unison? Welcome to the New York Jets, Bakhtiari, welcome. Yeah. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> there, there are very few things in life. One, death. Two, you get yelled at by your spouse. Three, Aaron Rodgers will not let Bakhtiari stay out there for another team to grab him. He will pick him up. He will pull him in. He will do it live. Um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's all I, we can just clip that. And then once it's announced that 
Bakhtiari is a New York Jet. We'll just come back and run that replay of that clip. That'll give me some time to take a drink, uh, have a little have a little breather, because that's as locked in as it gets. That's as locked in as it gets. Jake Browning, Bengals extended a tender to QB Jake Browning. This is a smart move. This is a way better quarterback than Darnold, a way better quarterback than Jimmy G. Um, and it's a good move, very good move by the, the the Cincinnati Bengals to make sure they have a very good quarterback. That if Joe Burrow missed three, four games, they could win two. They could win fifty percent of those games with ease with Jake Browning. They could maybe win three out of the four. You know that that's a fantastic, fantastic move. Uh, Zach Wilson, appreciate uh, his services. Just kidding. Um, GM Joe Douglas said Zach Wilson has been. Granted permission to seek a trade. Maybe he can go compete with Sam Darnold. <laughs> Maybe we saw what happened to Garrett Wilson. If anybody thinks Sam Darnold, Zach Wilson, Jimmy Garoppolo, any of these guys are going to do anything for the star wide receiver and make them even close, remotely close to their high productive levels, it's not happening. Zach Wilson is... Is not an elite quarterback. Never will be. He's not a top 32 quarterback either. Rookies are better than Zach Wilson. And I, I find it hard to believe a team's going to trade for him. So granting permission to Zach Wilson to seek a trade is like granting someone permission to, uh, I don't know, go to outer space, okay, on their lunch break. Hey, can I clock out? Will you give me permission to clock out and go to outer space on my lunch break? If you can get there, Bob. Go right ahead. If not, get back to work in 10 minutes. You can grant this guy whatever he wants. You can say, yeah, sure. Go talk to some teams. No one's making a trade offer for Zach Wilson. Plus, they already kind of hinted they, they may want to move on from this kid. Maybe he's not on the team anyway, and teams are like, why in the hell would I trade for him right now? Give up draft capital for a guy I don't even believe in. But yeah, good luck finding a job, Zach Wilson. But please don't touch another lineup again, especially where fantasy football studs are involved. Chiefs used their franchise tag on, on Sneed. This is fantastic. Sneed's a monster, and uh, this was very expected. The Chiefs are doing all the right things right now. All the right things. Talking about extending Andy Reid immediately. Uh, uh, talking about uh, just everything. Everything they're doing right now is fantastic. Just such a great organization. Chiefs are run so well. From top to bottom. Their quarterback is composed. I love the way Mahomes operates. He's a good dude. There's high character quality people in this organization. We make fun of the Kelsey Swift situation all the time. And I probably still will. But at the end of the day, it's like, you know, you get Kadarius Tony out of there. And, and the whole thing's, whole thing's cleaned up. There's not an ounce of any negativity. It's all hardworking players. It's all great coaching staff. It's well-prepared players and well-prepared coaches. Everybody knew what their assignment was. During the Super Bowl, they all knew the rules. San Francisco didn't. This is a well-organized operation over in KC, and they do everything right. They do everything right. Travis Etienne, head coach Doug Peterson, this is what we've been fearing. This is what we feared kind of all year, but it didn't necessarily unfold this way. But this is what you hear in the offseason, too. They don't necessarily replicate it during the year, so it's confusing. It makes you scared to draft Etienne too high, but then you see him use him because they can't keep him off the field. He's too exciting. He's too good. He's too potent. You put anybody else in there, they're not going to get a first round. They're not going to. They're not going to make the play, extend the play, and therefore the team has to make decisions to say, "Well, this, we said we didn't want to abuse ETM, but we got to throw him back in there. We need some yards." Th this is this is alarming, though, when you hear Doug Peterson say, who has been known from time to time to want a committee. Travis Etienne as the workhorse back is not a recipe he prefers. He prefers. Maybe he still has to deploy said recipe, but. Where do you get ETN? If it's the middle of the third round or later, I'm okay with the recipe being kind of confusing. I'm okay with the, the secret uh, ingredients of this thing being so good and so hard to pass up that even though you want to follow this certain recipe, he's going to detour and say, give me, give me the good stuff. Give me the ETN full workload, full load drop every single week. That's ETN. ETN probably convinces him keep me on the field coach not to mention to the degree he's talking i don't know that it affects him too much if he becomes more efficient if he becomes more efficient stays healthy maybe he produces the same exact stats that happens all the time that happens all the time aj brown caught over 100 receptions for the first time in his career 
I believe. He was never even really close to it. He'd catch 67 balls, 70-something balls. He, he would be literally 1,400, 1,500 yards on 70 to 80 receptions. And we said to ourselves, can you imagine A.J. Brown who catches double-digit touchdowns, 14 to 1,500 yards on 70-something receptions? Can you imagine if this guy got fed 100-plus receptions? He finally does last year. His efficiency went way down, and he didn't score more fantasy points at all. So it, it, it's not always the be-all, end-all, and sometimes it keeps a player healthy in the case of Devon Achan. You don't want Devon Achan getting boatloads and boatloads and boatloads of between-the-tackle carries. He probably did not score as many fantasy points. ETN, it's okay if they, they dumb down his workload a little bit. Water it down a tiny bit. I'm okay with it, but I will tell you this. I'm worried enough about him breaking down and this potential committee that Doug Peterson has a natural inclination to deploy, I'm, I'm worried enough about it to say, hey, third round, mid-third round, late third round, early fourth round, all fantastic, worth it, do it, do it live, grab his backup, you're covered. Grab Bigsby, who, yeah, he, Tank wasn't the guy last year, didn't really do much, but, you know, whoever the backup is, if they bring in another rookie or Tank Bigsby and ETN, you give Bigsby another chance, you cuff it, you're going to be fine. At, at 3.5 on, you're fine. If you've got to spend a late second, it starts getting scary, given that he has a little bit of that concern. Can he hold up on this type of workload? Is it really his style? Is it Are they overworking him? Will he just break down at some point or be the committee? you got to package in the risk. Third and a half to fourth round value is certainly packaging that in. So ADP, uh, the value is in the eye of the ADP, not the beholder. Uh, this news right here, well, this is just uh, in the house, Marvin Harrison walking, NFL Combine, he arrived, look at this man, focused, poised to answer questions and not participate. But we still love him, he's still going to the moon. Yeah. Marvin Harrison Jr. could be a top three or four wide receiver within one calendar year. And let me scratch that and say top one to three, top one to four potential wide receiver at the end of one calendar year. That's how good this kid is. This report here is interesting. Caleb Williams goes in depth with ESPN uh, on his landing spots, his possible landing spots. On the Bears, the Commanders, and more, he said, if I get drafted by the Bears, I'll be excited. Williams told uh, told ESPN, if they trade the pick and I get drafted by someone else, I'll, I'm just as excited. That was a common answer. It was a good answer. It's what you want to hear. Uh, I don't think there's anything we can even take away from that. We, we learned absolutely nothing from that, but it was news and I had to report it. So there you go. Take what you want from it. Assume what you want from it. This report here, Caleb Williams, the potential top overall pick, arrives today. And this is obviously before that one. Uh, expected to meet with the Bears, Commanders, Patriots, Raiders, Falcons, Jets, Giants, and Vikings. The Jets is interesting. Like, you got to wonder if what I said earlier in the offseason could be true. The fact that the Jets are meeting with them at all is weird. It's weird, and it does make me have some hope that the Jets are bold enough to sit Aaron Rodgers down and go, You're our boy, Blue. You're our boy, Blue. But I want to draft. Look what happened to us last year. I'll be gone. I'll be out of a job if you get injured again. We have to draft Penix Jr. We have to draft Bo Nix. We have to draft McCarthy. One of the three quarterbacks has to be drafted, which is the threat to Minnesota and why Minnesota does need that contingency plan. But this is something that has to be done. Penix Jr. Bo Nix has to be drafted by the Jets at 10 overall. It's got to be done. Plain and simple. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. That's the way I would approach it. If I was the owner, I would make sure it was done. I would override my GM and everybody and say, look, you, you can make all the calls all you want all the time, except for right now. I'm not putting our team in that situation ever, ever again. And the most common injury for an Achilles older quarterback or older player, Achilles tear recovering player, is tearing the other Achilles. The compensation injury is real. It happens all the time. When you tear one Achilles, you're susceptible because you're you're literally putting in, in some ways think of it like when when something breaks when you have two of them, the other one a lot of times is not far behind. For whatever reason, the wear and tear, the way the person steps and everything. And so you you put yourself in a position where you tear one and then you start compensating on this other leg 
And then all of a sudden you start stepping weird. You start planting weird. You start taking a, a lot of the the, the 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 force whenever anything happens. You're just you're naturally uh, fe fe in fear. And a dog gets his front right paw injured. He'll for the rest of his life when you you get near him, he'll pull the one paw up and be standing on his good paw. It's a natural instinct for a, a human being or any being at all to be very protective of an injury that's that significant. And Achilles is bad. And, and when you tear it, you it's like you lose your soul. That thing snaps. You have no ability to move the foot and do things. It's horrible. So they need to prepare. Wheel Snipe City coming in with a $10 hauler. Glad I dodged him for Kyron and Puka at the deadline. Sorry again for the cussing. You're the best, bro. Wheel Snipe City, appreciate you with a $10 hauler. Yeah, just when you're on the phone line, you know, only because it hurts. It's not because I care about cursing. It's the extensive cursing in short periods of time, especially some of the words. That, that YouTube will say, okay, that video we're not going to reach out to advertisers on because you, you kind of crapped the bet on that one, pal, is what they end up saying, you know, when you do those things. So that, that's the only reason. It's, I don't want you to think I'm I'm a, a no-swearing, you know, Sammy because that's not the case at all. But I appreciate you. Wheel Snipe City with the absolute gem. $10 watt on screen. Wheel Snipe, you're the man, pal. You're the man. This guy's probably gifted about 50 or 60 of you a gifted membership at some point. You give Wheel Snipe City your love. Drop him an eggplant emoji, a fire emoji, a thumb up, whatever you want to do. But let Wheel Snipe City and and Perps if he's in here, and Ron Navy if he's in here. You let all three of those those OG super chat and gifted membership monsters. You let them know you appreciate them. Uh, wh where were we at? Okay, I don't know. Green Bay. I think we're talking about Green Bay. I think is this what we're talking about? Green Bay. Yeah. Okay. So the Jets. We went on the Jets tangent. That's that's very typical of me to go off on a weird, crazy, long tangent. Uh, this was earlier report. I suppose the Bears are going to trade the top pick. This was stupid by Peter King. I I, 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 I don't know where he's even coming up with that. It's total BS. Um, but we get report on it because NBC Sports is reporting on it. He doesn't know. He doesn't he even said in there. Let me let, let me show you real quickly in case you're like Smitty. He knows more than you. I suppose the Bears are going to trade the pick. I know nothing. <laughs> in the middle of it, I know nothing. I suppose the Bears are going to trade the pick. I know nothing, but it seems to be the way the wind's blowing. Yeah, okay. Wind blowing. I know nothing. Yeah, give me a break. You guys know how I feel about Poles. Poles is making mistakes on all, all levels here. All levels here. Bringing in Waldron to curb Caleb and, and develop Caleb. When Kingsbury was available, you brought him in for a, 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 a just a dot your I's and cross your T's interview, and you didn't go with him. You didn't convince him, hey, Kingsbury, we want you. We're bringing Caleb in. You're his QB coach at USC. He just was. He's the closest thing to Caleb you can find out there. He was his QB coach at USC this past season. That's why Kingsbury wants Caleb so bad. If he went there, I'd be okay with it. I would believe in Caleb because he's in the right hands to mold and sculpt. But you got all these things that are constantly going on with Caleb. And then the, there was like a, there's all kinds of rumors and things we'll, we'll address as more comes out with, with something about his dad. I don't even know if it's BS. There's so much crazy stuff floating around out there. Okay. But Caleb Williams has question marks. And you put him in Chicago where they failed Fields. They fail everything right now. And I admittedly thought that Fields would get them all out of that rut. And they failed Fields. They used them wrong. We saw in week three and week four when Fields was literally one of the best quarterbacks, top two or three, in the National Football League for two straight weeks. You don't trip and fall into elite production like Justin Fields displayed in week three and four uh, off of luck. You don't just trip and fall into that. I know Fields has it in him. I know if Fields goes to the Atlanta Falcons, he's going to be absolutely glorious. I know that Fields will be a freaking monster if he ends up going to the Atlanta Falcons, which is beyond returning to the Bears, the first option I've had on this list all offseason long. I've never wavered. It's been the Falcons as the top choice. The only reason the Bears is here is that that's where he's currently at. Falcons are the only choice, my top choice, the best choice, and currently Vegas' favorite to land Justin Fields. I'm excited for it. You're excited for it. The world needs it. The world absolutely needs it. The Fantasy Football Show phone lines are open. Call into the show. Call, call, call into the show.
Dial in, dial in, dial in. Appreciate you all. Phone lines are open. Uh, thank you for the super chat, Wheel Snipe. You are the man. Ten dollar holler does not go over, uh, uh, overlooked. That is a fantastic uh, uh, move on your on your part. Wheel Snipe City is a magician. Perps is a magician. Ron Navy a magician. Absolute gem. Um, six six three six caller. Please turn down your 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 background noise. What is your name and where are you calling from? Yeah, go ahead. All right, so who am I? I'm a quarterback that never threw over 17 touchdowns. I'm a quarterback that never won over eight games. I'm a quarterback that never won a playoff game. Just tell me. T- just let's not play riddle me this. Let, hit me with hit me with your take. I'd love to hear it though. I'm mm-hmm. Justin Fields. That's okay. who I am. Yeah. So you, well, why let, wouldn't you even think let, about let, let, drafting let, let another me, quarterback and keep Justin Fields? He can't even complete a whole season. He's let, never let, me riddle, let me riddle yards. you this. Let me riddle, riddle you this. I am a horrible franchise. Uh, I have the wrong people in charge. Um, I am bring, <laughs> I'm bringing in Shane Waldron as my OC when we had Getsy, and I passed on Cliff Kingsbury, and and uh, we don't know what we're doing. We passed on C.J. Stroud. Who am I? Who am I? And you're gonna judge this man who's sitting you, in a. You said it, my friend. <laughs> so let me just tell you this way, bro. Uh, what was your name again? JP. JP from where again? I'm sorry. Missouri. Missouri. Let me let me put you in the system, JP. JP from right. Missouri. Let me put it this way, and, I, and I've said this in abundance already, so I don't need to beat a dead horse on it. But I'll just tell you this. I don't have any answers for the, the Bears fans because you're going to hear double talk from me, but it's on purpose. It's by design. It's 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 really alerting you to how I feel about the Bears. If they trade fields away, it shows me that they don't know what they're doing because they could bring in Marvin Harrison Jr. with this number right. one overall pick, pair him with fields, pair him with DJ Moore, pair him with, with Komet. They'd have a, a nice foundation. And that is Imagine the, even what, grabbing Willem at third. It, well, I mean, yeah, I, I, bro, none. you could go. What if you want Bow? I, I I know everyone likes Komet a lot, but what if you want Bowers? Yeah. What if you want Roma Dunze? Right. What, what if you? What if you? So there's right. a lot of ways to go. So, but but here's the problem. Okay, this is the problem. JP, is if you are going that way, you've already spat in Justin Fields' face. You've literally, like crop dusted this man you've you've crop dusted this man right in front of everybody because you literally said yeah well i mean we're we're gonna do what's right for us he's not our first choice you know if we can get the right offer that is better than fields is that not what that's saying if we get the right offer we'll make a trade is that not telling you that fields is not their first choice their first choice is an amazing offer right if you love justin fields you would say no, no you you not it doesn't you don't need to play games with the one pick. You can get the world for the one pick. You playing games with the one pick does not up the value all that much. It's a draft pick. It's not a player. It's not it's not collateral. If anything, talking about Justin Fields as being move a movable piece, you're devaluing Justin Fields. You can't devalue the one overall pick. You can devalue Justin Fields by handcuffing yourself in front of everybody and going, "We're going to trade him." He's not good enough to be our starter, but who wants to come get him? So you can devalue a player. There's no need to play the game at the expense of the confidence of your quarterback and the rapport between you and the quarterback. It it makes zero sense. There's no games that need to be played. You don't see other quarterbacks being doubted by their head coach publicly. It's, It's a debacle. So again, Poles is failing right there. If he retains Fields, he failed him. And I think Fields doesn't develop where he, how he needs to develop. A, because of that. B, because of Chicago and the way that they operate. They just aren't building right. 
and, and they don't have the right people. I don't believe in Eberflus. I don't believe in I don't believe in 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 any part of this coaching staff. And I don't believe in Pools, even though Pools made this best trade of, of of a lifetime, passing on Stroud and calling it the best trade ever. You're sitting here at the one pick. He can't afford to mess it up again. He can't afford to pass on the number one overall player. Right. So He'll get keep, fired. so keeping Fields is a mistake because you've already pissed all over Fields doing this whole song and dance. But if you go get Caleb. You're going to fail, too, because you've got Shane Waldron to sculpt him. Right. It, it's like going right. and getting a, a high school gym coach that's coached freshman football to coach your, your your varsity team versus going and getting another varsity coach at another school that maybe got fired, but he did really well. He's got a good track record. That's what we're talking about. I'm not saying that the right. high school gym coach couldn't be a diamond in the rough. I'm not saying that Waldron is a, 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 is a total bum that will never do anything. He's been in the league for on and off 20 years, but he's only had an OC job for the, the three most recent years in Seattle. It took him it took him like 17, 20 years to get an OC job. And he didn't blow yeah. anything away. Oh, he, the way he worked with Geno Smith, the way he the way he worked the way he worked with Geno Smith doesn't do it for me. Oh, look at Geno Smith. That is not what you want when you say, go fix no. Justin Fields. Oh, he worked with Geno Smith. That's not what you want when you say, go go mold and sculpt Caleb and make sure he doesn't go the direction a lot of the doubters think he could go. This is a debacle, in my opinion, waiting to happen. And there, there's no real way no. out of this for, for Ryan Poles, in my opinion. There isn't. I think this is just no. going toward, and all I want is Fields to get out of it because guess what? Caleb's the, the the least quarter the, the one quarterback I'm not that sold on, I, I, unless he goes to play in Washington Ooh. with Kingsbury. So if someone's going to get burned in this, no offense, Caleb, but I want it to be Caleb in Chicago, not Fields in Chicago. So get get Fields over to Atlanta, Atlanta. Let's do it live. Correct. I'm with you on that. And I'll tell you this. Are I want to say this because I never called in before. Okay. But you were talking. I was watching about the uh, the horn. And you had a big, you know, thing about the horn. But the only thing you didn't mention is that the first time I ever saw your show, I, like I, as, as soon as I clicked on your show, and I know I might get a lot of feedback on this one, but I'm just going to say it like it is. But you did say, but no, you were like, all right, you put the show on break and some song came on and I heard a song and it came on and it was like, Rah, 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 and you still play it. And it was like, oh, I can't watch this guy. And I, like, I played your like show for like 10 seconds and I saw that and it was like, I can't watch this guy. Like, I don't even like that. Anymore. I can't watch this. And then like four months later, I came back to, I came back to your show and I didn't even hear that song. And I was like, well, you know, I'll give this guy another chance. And I've been watching you ever since. So, I mean, if you wanted to bring up the horn thing, I think maybe you should bring up that because that kept me away from like your show for like four like four months. I would say. The, the horn kept so, you away. The horn kept you away, or the not song? The horn, not the What's, horn. What song? The song. There's like some song you put on break, and it's, there's only one song, and it's like 20, one song that goes raw, 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 raw. That 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 <laughs> that, so, like, no. that song kept you away. That I, I've got no, it right. Well, I've, well, I've got it right I, here. I watched, like, I watched like twenty seconds of you. Oh. And then I heard that song, and I was like, yeah, that ain't my style. All right, hold on. Like, hold on, Karen. I mean, hold I on, JP. Hold on, hold on, JP. Let, let me let me play it for you. You're talking this song kept you away from a show you enjoy thoroughly. Ready? I'm going to play it for you. Go ahead. Don't go running yet. Play. Okay. I'm not. Super chat alert. Yeah. Fire it up. Now it's a <laughs> Th this song, this song was that bad to you? Alert. I only Super heard 20 alert. seconds of your show. I was tortured by my, like my little brother. He used to sing that kind of stuff. And I wake up by like 5 a.m. hearing that, and like, yeah, I'd, I'd wake up yelling like, please stop. I, I wake up at 5:45, you know, not five. You know what my grandpa <laughs> used to say? You can't please all of the Karens all the time. You can only please some you're of the right, Karens some of the right, time. But I'm not a Karen. I, I'm not a Karen. Okay, but but like, bro, because bro, I'll tell you what's why wrong with that song? If you ask, if you ask all all your people out there who like who really okay. likes that song, okay, I guarantee you, you're you're, you're good. Hey, you ready? You, you, you you ready? Here we go. I'm gonna play it, and I, <laughs> and I want to see I want to see thumbs up or hands raised if this is a problem. Yeah. 
Or no, no, no. Thumbs up or hands raised if you Not like a it. If you like Not it. A problem. Is there a it, better song? It, That's it, all. No, no. It was a problem. You said that you left the show, and now you're back. Well, it was because I never because I never bro, joined the show. Bro, it was literally. I, I watched two seconds. I saw that and I was like, I can't watch this guy. Bro, and it's I went literally, over to it's literally a twenty-something second clip. That's play when someone right, and I only chat. watched ten seconds of your show. Well, That's what I'm saying. I, but, I sure judged it. It, it. The way you worded it at first was as if you were watching the show, you had to go because of the song. It wasn't like you stumbled upon I the was show. Like, no, I can't watch that guy. I, I'm just being honest. I can't. Okay. Say it no other I way. don't. I don't mind. I don't mind feedback, but it it feels a little Karen to me. But let's let's get everybody. Hey, hang tight, <laughs> J, JP. I, JP, I I kind of like you, JP. I do. I kind of. I don't want you to get the, the sense that I don't like you. But please give me a thumbs up if it's a good song. Okay, not any negative thing. It's gonna drive you away. Or thumbs down or some kind of X or whatever. If it's something that literally okay, okay. would drive. Because here's, here's the thing. here's the Ever problem. Since I gave you a second chance, I was like, I can't even believe I didn't watch this guy. Because of that song, I was so I, mad. At my, I've been so mad. I can't at either, bro. I can't either. I don't see one single person that is saying that this song is so bad. I gotta so get out of here. Like it. So it's just me. I'm the Karen. And, I'll, and the, I'll and, take that. In the boss horn. In the I didn't care about the boss horn. <laughs> I didn't care. I liked it. I thought you were wild with it. I was like, dude, he should not get rid of that boss my, horn. My I don't care if he does just like a three-minute episode. And he just does the boss horn, and he's like, free talk to the moon. My, Wah! Kids to the moon. Wah! My, like, if he just did that for three minutes, then, you know, uh, everybody this would... Is, this like, is I great. Just uh, hang hang tight. J, J, JP, JP, I kind of like you, okay? So I don't want you to come away from anything negative. I want you to stay, bro. Pitch your tent. Cement it into the ground. Uh, we don't want you going anywhere. This is kind of funny, though, I have to admit. Let's go over to uh, Young. <laughs> Let's go over to Young real quick. So hold on, JP. Young, you're live, and then I'll go to okay. uh, Aurora from Philly. Uh, Aurora. Let's that, go. Yeah. Uh, Young, Young, what's up? You see what I, Young, what up, you, hold on. Can I just say something real quick? And this is not to, to complain. I have the best job in the entire world. You do. I, I have the best job in the entire world. I'm not complaining a single bit. But this is the stuff I deal with on a hourly basis. You guys don't see it. I'm gonna, in, in, in my in my um, in my behind the scenes, the Smithers that that I'm gonna have like a vlog basically about the back end of the show, like me inside here, me getting ready, me talking, and telling you guys what I'm thinking, just going about my day, fixing my my new car up, all that stuff. It's gonna be an amazing <laughs> vlog, right? And you guys are gonna really get a taste of how much. BS I really have to deal with on a daily basis from how much time the boss horn took away from stuff to the, the to these kind of things that happen and uh, most yeah. of them are like very one off that that it affects one or two people and it's a big drama thing that has, that means makes no sense or one of my followers is pissed off at me somebody that's really close <laughs> to the show's leaving me curse word voicemails like Smitty account like constantly people quitting the <laughs> leagues it's non stop there's non stop drama going on inside my communities inside my live chat communities everything it's cra it's crazy it's cra it's absolutely non-stop you guys would just be floored at how much crap i have to deal with on a, on a daily basis not a weekly or monthly daily there's something going on like this daily and i've got to make a snap judgment on whether it's going to affect the show or not because Really, it is about the bottom line, right? I need to. Sh Can you stop laughing, bro, for a second? I mean, bro, I, we got, you're, you're we got it, JP. We got a guy named Bill the Tickler that laughs like that, and he just nonstop laughing. We we don't have room for two Bill the Ticklers, so hang tight, real quick. I know you're having a good time, but but I I, ser I seriously uh, have to make snapshot judgments, and I messed up on the boss one. Don't worry, I'm not firing it off. The battery's out. Um, I messed up on just like assuming. I messed up on just assuming that this thing was was being overlooked by just a certain number of people, and it wasn't worth my time stopping and and, and, and addressing it. But this is crazy. Like this, yeah. this saw, you left because of the twenty dollar holiday. Does this make you want to leave, JP? Oh, yeah, give me twenty dollar holiday, cause everyone's getting bothered. Yeah. That, that's 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 Denny drunk, and he 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 laid that track down for us. We we recorded it live. One one take, Willie. He did it in one take, uh, surprisingly. Uh -huh. Um, just making sure. Okay, young young, you're live. Go. 
Yo, Smitty. <clears throat> I'll say this about the original $20 Harlow song. Um, that song, when that $20 Harlow would go off, I would just, an, another level of comfort would be unlocked for me. And like, wherever Dang. I was, what, whatever was going on, on, it would just make me just feel, it was, it has a nostalgic thing for me. Like since, you know, cause that's how, that's like the OG $20 hauler. So, I mean, I would say if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't think anybody was complaining about, about the original $20 hauler. So, I mean, the Denny thing is cool. I, I'm not a, you know, it, it's whatever, man. Like I'm, I'm either way with it. Um, I'm not complaining about anything, you know, even the horn was cool. I, I didn't mind the horn. So, uh, but yeah, so, that's my he, he, okay, so here, here's my reaction initially when I hear, Hey Smitty, this, this old song used to have drove me away. I'm like, not again, not again. Like I have to dissect this now. <laughs> Normally I'm so good. I'm so good. Look, I know my audience. I know my channel, like the back of my hand. This is, but but I was off on the yeah. boss horn. I was no. off on the boss for horn. That, that, hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't think hold, you were, though. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Uh, 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 I was off on the boss horn, and and it took me a while. I had to dig into analytics, and it was true. There was a there was a, a significant drop off in watch time, especially when the boss horn was getting fired off a lot. It took me a while to figure out that that was actually a real thing. I was so invested in it. I loved it. I overlooked it. But that's literally the first time I ever don't get a, have a good feel of whether something like when, when I got people on the phone line, I can tell when I need to cut everybody off. When Denny goes too long, I know to rip Denny off the phone line because people are like, it's dragging. I know when it's good. Um, but the boss one tripped me up. But now I hear this and I'm like, God, now, now I can't just assume that this song is not a problem now. Now I've got to look into it because JP says he didn't come back because the song played one time. And if it, one time, JP, one time. Hey, hey, if that guy right there, this guy on the phone, if he said the way he did, like, I mean, he made it sound like that song put like goosebumps up his skin. And I don't want to take that from anybody. Bro, bro, he played this at his wedding night when he walked his girl down the you aisle. You see what I'm saying? Hey, I don't want to take that from All right, anybody. hold on. Let's I play it. Let's that. play it one more time and see if it, if it drives, you know, goosebumps up your spine or if you throw up. Okay, let's just check it out. <laughs> All right. All right. Go ahead, play That's it? Alert. Super chat alert. <laughs> like we're we're really having problems with that song, really? Is it too loud? No. Is, is the volume do I not notice that it's redlining? It's I, I feel like it's yeah, I feel like you could slow dance to that song. Like that was that was uh, and and let me just say J, JP let me just say something I farm out some stuff but that I did not that was me and and, and, and it, it, that hit it hit me in the nutsack a little bit when you said that that song drove you away that is my best take of grunge that I can do of metal I guess you could say and I couldn't even make it heavy that thing's the heaviest thing I could get I felt like it was barely heavy uh, by the way, not one thumb down that I've seen so far. Not one single thumb down. You're the only one. So yeah, I, you can't, I, 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 you, J, you can't J, get rid of that. JP, it's too good. Then. It's too good. Hey, can we call Tom you? McCarran. Can we call you uh, Double Talk JP or Backtrack Karen. Backtrack you JP? Karen. Uh, Karen. <laughs> Karen, Karen, <laughs> he's volunteering to be called Karen. I didn't even think of it yet again. You know, he, 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 he's volunteering for a worse name. Okay, here's why. Here's why it's pro, here's why it's probably uh, here's why it's probably you know double talk backtrack. JP, you called in to roast me on Justin Fields, and you took that back. <laughs> <laughs> you, no, you not call, Rose. You called. I was just I, I, like, like all the hype about Justin Fields, and it's you like, call, man, he's you, just he's never you, performed. You called it. it you, you called it to talk trash about this song. Now you want it back more than more than young. You want it more more than more than young. You want it. You want it on the channel now. It's part of the channel. It's in your blood. You want it. You want it on Spotify on replay. Like you. Look, I, I will say this about JP. I like JP. I like JP a lot. Nobody trash him in the chat. This guy, this guy's getting goaded on on the first call in. The reason I like you, JP, is it, it's not like you go along with anything. It's not like you're a yes man. You are. You get along with people. I can tell. 
You go into a room. I do. Yeah, everyone can want to play Monopoly I'm uh, at randomly instead of go to the bar. You're like, let's play Monopoly. You are just do whatever the <laughs> crowd wants to do. You're a people pleaser. I've got a psych degree. Don't argue with me. You're a people pleaser. You're good. You're a people pleaser. And you probably You're a lot more on point than I even thought you would be. You I'll tell you the truth. You probably work. If I had to guess some really stressful job and you come home. Mortgages, bro. Yeah, because when you come home, you got to have a different take. And it's like you can't bring that with you or you're just going to be stressed out. So you'll go with the flow. Yeah. You go with everything. You can't right. control right. the I'll things in your workplace. You can't control the you're things right. in your workplace, the variables. So when you get home, you're like, someone else make a decision for me. The song's good. Okay. Field, fields is bad. Yes. Fields is bad. No, he's not. Okay. okay. You're right. <laughs> I'm this guy. See? Yeah, I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> but, 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 and you see, I'll agree with what you say because it's like, well, in a best, if you get him in a best ball league, he's going to pop all four games. He's known for that. But you got to you, you have to get another quarterback. Oh, JP. Uh, JP, you're, you're the, hold on one second. Let's, let's get, uh, young. Did you, did you have anything else young? Um, I'm not going to hang up on you, but I, I want to go back to you real quick. I do have uh, a question, man. Um, uh, I might have missed it. You probably talked about this. I've been a little more busy than usual, but, um, with, as far as, uh, Jaden Daniels, it's looking like he might be going to the Patriots. Um, how do you feel? Do you still feel the same about him if he goes to new England? Love him. I, I love him way more in Washington, but I, I would I don't know. I wouldn't say it the way you said it, that he looks like he's going to the Patriots. First of all, that's like saying that uh, a horse has won the, the race before the, 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 you know, the start of the race. You know what I mean? Like, we have no idea. It, like, and it's going to rain. No, there's there's, there's, there's going to be... There's I, a chance. I mean, yeah, yeah, but it looks like he's going. There's no way we even know that. There's, there, there's, there's like I would say there's no even good percentage chances we could even throw around because combines gotta happen, and once the combine happens, the just interviews alone, and then the pro days, you could have JD five. Half of the teams in the National Football League, I predict, will have him as their number one overall player. So okay, wa me, wa Washington, real quick, real, real quickly, hold on. Washington has two masterminds. Heading up this offense, and well, building the offense would be Peters bringing in the talent, the talent evaluation. Adam Peters helped identify Brock Purdy. Adam Peters handpicked George Kittle. Adam Peters is an absolute monster, and I'm telling you, and I could be I'm wrong. I'm telling you, JD five is is the best thing in this draft. Period. Like I love Marvin Harrison Jr., but if you need a quarterback, he is the best thing an organization could get. He's Lamar Jackson 2.0, better than Lamar Jackson. He'll be better than Lamar Jackson. Mark my words. And if anybody's gonna follow suit on that, if I am right on it, it's Adam Peters. He knows. He knows too, <laughs> and he's gonna make it happen. Not to mention Kingsbury is an absolute, absolute gift to this situation. And he may not be the best head coach. I get it. There's things he did wrong. The same thing with, with Shanahan. He'd be amazing OC. Makes horrible head coaching decisions. Um, time and time and time and time and time and time and time again. If somebody can call in and debate me on that all day long. I could care less. The phone lines are always open for that. But it's, it's you know, he's such a good OC, Shanahan, that he overshadows his mistakes a lot of the time. And then people say, oh, he's a good coach. Look, and he did this. How do you say it? He got to national, or he got to a, 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 a NFC championship game, blah, 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 blah. Like, uh, that's what I'm saying is OC got him to the national, or to the, I keep saying the national championship, the NFC championship game. His OC capability got him there. His head coaching decision-making lost him. The, the game his inability to prep his players his inability to put his foot on the gas during two playoff games right before almost lost to the lions almost lost to the green bay packers because of his decision making his OCing is great kingsbury may not be the best head coach but he's a phenomenal architect of offenses and air raid or not they're going to deploy a, a massive arsenal and jd5 is going to the freaking moon so i'll just say this i know i'm going on a tangent here 
I'll just say that I think mm -hmm. JD5 is a contemplation at number one overall if it's not the Bears drafting there. I think the Bears go Caleb. What? Uh, whoever's making all that noise in the background, if you could mute, please. Um, it's probably it's probably Karen, but and, and it's okay. It, it's okay. It, 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 it's okay if it is, but it's your first time on the phone line. We get it. Just mute it while you're making ice or, or slushy or whatever you're doing. Um, but if if okay. if JD five goes to Washington or whoever trades up if they do to the number one pick, I I feel like he's more likely to go one and two than he is to go three. Drake May could climb up boards as just as easily. If Drake May went to Washington, I'd be very high on Drake May. I'd be in a dilemma of JD five versus Drake May if Drake May's in the hands of Kingsbury and Adam Peters because Adam Peters is also has a good. Leg. Huh? He's just got so much talent in his leg. Who's talking? Who's, who's, ta who's, ta who's like, talking? Who's talking right now, Karen? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay. He's got. Uh, he, he's just. He's so multi-talented. He's just not like those other quarterbacks. Yeah. Go, go back. Go back to Young real quick, and then we're gonna go over to Aurora, who's been waiting very patiently. Then Scuba. Then the or, then the Bruce. Go ahead, uh, uh, Young. R wrap it up real quick. I'll keep yeah, you on yeah, the line. So so yeah, man. So. Let's just say, hypothetically speaking, Grizzly. are you still as high on JD5 if he goes to New England? Um, as high? No, because like I said, Peters and, and Kingsbury make him just uh, like AR5 was. Remember AR5 was yeah, like, that, we're... Yeah, 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 yeah. But, but hold on. I'll, I'll finish how I think it will at the end of the day be okay. But AR5, remember when we drafted AR5, he was going around... I don't know, I want to say six, seven, eight at first, right? Early off season, people were like, I, I might want to draft him as my starter. And then by the time we got to like August, it was like people were like all in. Fifth, what was it like fifth round, something like that? He was a starter. People were drafting him to start. You were drafting a comparable quarterback with him in case it didn't work out. But he was absolute glory. And then like mid, even before mid season, he was getting traded as if he was a locked in top five quarterback. I think JD five in Washington is that guy. If, if yeah. he goes to New England, it's a slower development, but yeah, very much dependent on. Do they bring in a Ridley? Do they do, do they somehow trade back into round two? I've said that if JD five went to New England, and New England traded back into the first round to get a Dunze or something like that, something crazy bold, then I could be as on board in year one in New England than I would be with Washington. But it have to have there have to be some weapons. But the thing about JD5, is there a possibility he's That's still as good in yeah. New England as he is in Washington? There's still the chance. Even without the extra weapons, if they bring in just a Ridley only, they got Stevenson there. There's no Bill Belichick in the way anymore. He felt like a crutch on the offense. JD5, like AR5, can survive without as much support because of the running and the ability. So in a nutshell, not degrade, devaluing him or degrading his value too much, but I certainly want him in Washington is my answer. Would May in Washington be arguable for me versus JD5 in New England? Possibly. Possibly. I'm going to play it by ear. You, you know, after after the combine, or, well, combine because of, you know, interviews and such, but after the pro days, I'm 100% going to know no matter what what I want, you know what I mean? But don't don't fret if he goes to New England. He still could be a top five quarterback of the future in New England. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Okay, hold yeah. on hold okay, on one yeah, second. Hold on one second. Let me hit these two supers. I'll be back for you, young. Stay right there. I'm gonna go to Aurora right no after order. I get Aurora, hold on one second. Let me get these two super chats out of the way. Then I go to Scuba, then I go to the Bruce. Grizzly slimes, I'm sorry about the wait. Hills at your boy on the horn call. Okay. Uh, appreciate you, Grizzly. Grizzly was one of the people that didn't want the boss horn. A lot of people didn't. And, you know, it, it is what it is. It was kind of entertaining. It's, it was like a f inner fight within the family. We made the correction. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Why not OG $20 holler combo with a little Deckard horn? <laughs> uh, appreciate you, perps. I do have another sponsor. This is going to be, this is going to be, uh, this is going to be tough. Because it's kind of like, it's kind of like a horn. <laughs> but I'm going to mostly do it on, I'm going to mostly do it on IG. I'm, I'm trying out a product and reviewing it live. It's not near as uh, abrasive 
it, but I'll, I'll just introduce it very gently just to, to review it and let you all know where you can get it and such. It won't be something, unless you guys love it, then we can incorporate it. It's not loud. It's not battery powered, but it is kind of a fun little party uh, trick or whatever, if you will. And that should be here with the, by, by Monday. So get get ready for that. <laughs> but it's like a baby boss horn <laughs> type of, uh, of situation. Let me just put it that way. But no one get uh, excited and leave the channel because you think I'm bringing the boss horn back. I'm not. Perps, appreciate your twenty dollar hauler. Perps, what do you prefer? Arnold, Mike Tyson, uh, Donald, the Donald, uh, the Denny twenty dollar hauler, or the old school twenty dollar hauler that that now Karen loves. Uh, you choose what you want. And before I do, I am yeah. all in. <laughs> Karen loves. So depending on what he chooses, uh, go ahead, Aurora. I'm so sorry about the wait. No, you're good, Smitty. I know you're dealing with a lot. Uh, All obviously, the time. I forgot this guy's name. Uh, Karen. Karen, we're calling him now. Yeah. But I, 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 Karen, I, I, to, I, I, <laughs> I totally disagree with it because, um, you know, I think the OG, it's not really, to me, the song. It's more so how you get up and you make it rain with the song. I think that brings back a lot of nostalgic vibes when you go on the show it's always nice to see that so i i love that song uh but yeah i certainly uh do respect this thing because i've never heard somebody just call in just to complain about a song uh on yeah the channel, so well that, that, hey look hey can we give jp aka karen at least like some major major goaded props for i was literally like can we call you double talking jp yo call me karen <laughs> can, can we can we at least acknowledge listen, that this man named I, himself listen, I, he gave himself what the people say i'm in okay now i love that song and i would love to know who just hey, sings it i'm ready to play it, it like, it's me i'm, I'm all in it's, like, it's, it's, no it's my me. song it's my song i'm gonna put it on spotify now <laughs> i'm gonna finish it make it a three minute song now hey uh uh aurora okay you, t aurora tell me yeah. what one you like better i'm gonna give uh, perps who just dropped another $20 hauler he says he's completely disappointed in the chat we've been live for over an hour and only 53 thumbs up it's now 55 we got uh, about 80 90 people in the chat please punch the thumb up button perps is not happy all right tell me if you like the is this as good i'm going to do both make it rain nostalgic super chats i guess we got to bring back the make it rain because that, that's been something i've noticed people are, are wanting back so tell me if you like this one okay watch ready aurora can you see the screen okay here we go uh Okay, so do you like that's making it rain, but with the Denny version? Or is there something about this, the other song with the Make It Rain that's just better? Like, what what one is better? What it one? Didn't even get me I, I, I appreciate the fact that he did it live. I mean, we do it live here on the Fantasy Football Show. But uh, I think the OG one, I mean, you have to go with the OG okay, one. Let, now, let, I'll tell you what. If I have a few drinks in me... This one I can roll with. Okay, let, let me down. let me see let me work it one more time. Let's let's see if we can do the old school and tell me if this brings back any memories. Here we go. Um, it's gonna play Denny's for a second, but I'll hit the song. Oh, yeah, yeah. Alert! Super chat alert! <laughs> this guy. Karen's Karen's a Karen's a wild card. I, I swear. So I like so it now. I can't tell you no other way. I that that one is beautiful, Smitty. I, I think a few people in the chat just orgasm because of how much they love this one. But uh yeah, yeah. No, I, I gotta yeah. go with the OG. You gotta go with the OG. Okay, guys, can we get a vote in the chat? Is the OG the way to go or not? Um we got we got uh thank you. Uh Perps wants more thumbs up, please. We got sixty one thumbs like really we got we got about a hundred people in here, and we literally have sixty one thumbs up. Um, hung like Hernandez. Uh, on that on that note, <laughs> hung like Hernandez dropping a super chat. Texans move up to grab Marvin Harrison Jr. to pair with Stroud. I don't I, <laughs> I don't think that's gonna happen. But man, wouldn't that be crazy if that happened? They got Tank Dell. They got Nico Collins. 
you know, I'm sure they're going to potentially, it wouldn't be, it would, I mean, I would do it, but I, you know, I don't think NFL teams are, are going to be that wide receiver heavy. I would do it. Just like I told everybody, if I was the Atlanta Falcons, I don't care what anybody says. I could care less if people think I'm off my rocker. I don't, I'm always honest about how I feel. I would take Brock Bowers, tight end Brock Bowers at eight if I'm Atlanta and have Pitts and Bowers both and do the double Hernandez Gronk tight end situation. And I'd do it with a smile. Um, thank you, Hung Like Hernandez, for dropping that. Thank you, Perps, for dropping doubles. Uh, this afternoon, let Smitty down to wipe your feet. He wants thumbs up. You know, we got 65 thumbs up. 100 people in here, 65 thumbs up. Punch the thumb up button, please. Uh, okay, so Aurora, you got anything else? You can stay on hold. I'll come back to you. I just want to go over to Scuba and then to the Bruce. Yeah, no worries. Uh, I'll make this one quick, and then I'll, I'll stay on hold. But I, I do have a question. I got to keep two keepers and this is down the road so i mean no decision really is going to be made today and i think i know where i'm going here but i just wanted to get your advice maybe name a few players but uh essentially in this keeper league you can't keep the first two rounds and uh the round you drafted him last year it's like plus one so gotcha. the round above is where yep so uh, I'll just name a few players uh, that are eligible and see your thoughts. But to preface, I want to keep Anthony Richardson, 10th rounder, which that will cost me, and Rasheed Rice, uh, which would be a last round uh, because he was free agency. Okay. The other players, and some of these I picked up, so they're still eligible. Uh, Jalen Hurts, uh, second rounder. TJ Hawkinson, fourth. Obviously, he's injured. Su super, super uh, flex? Kirk Cousins. Is it super flex? Uh, no, super flex. Okay, nope. Hurts, what round? What uh, round was Hurts? Jalen's second rounder. Okay, yeah. Too high if you got uh, AR5. He, yeah, exactly. TJ is a fourth rounder. Uh, Chris Godwin, fifth rounder. Kirk Cousins, 11th rounder. Don't know if he's going to be in Minnesota. And uh, just Russell Wilson. I mean, I'm not going to keep him. No, you, you don't want to keep any quarter. You don't want to keep any. Last round. Yeah, you're not going to keep any of those quarterbacks because you, you already have AR5 and, and you know, I mean, yeah, exactly. So Rashid Rice would be my last round, and Anthony Richardson at tenth round. I mean, I think that's great. Balance. And so you're so. keeping three guys, though. You need one more. No, two. Oh, then yeah, yeah. You're not going to overrule any of that. Like the only thing you consider is Hurts, but like why? If Hurts is costing you a second round, no. Right. But but you would still look for a quarterback later in the draft just to you know as security. Uh, oh yeah, Anthony. Just uh, I'm a, injury. I'm gonna have a video. I'm gonna have a refresh video on this that pertains to this upcoming season, just because it needs to be refreshed. And plus, nobody's gonna find the old one. But I'm a big advocate of getting a Joe Burrow too. If you're if you're seeing him around seven or six, Burr. and you're not liking what's around there, and the guy you're gonna reach for right there, you're gonna get at the next round. Just kick the can down the road a little bit, draft him down there, take Joe Burrow. Uh, but only if we're talking mm -hmm. about like seven or you know, like like that territory. No, I'm not taking a fourth rounder yeah. quarterback if you got era five. Like I'm not messing around that territory. But you're talking about like seventh or eighth round. Like that's where backup running backs are sometimes drafted. You know, to try and like, hey, yeah. I, I'm, I'm yeah. gonna take Charbonnet. He's gonna outperform Walker. I'm gonna go ahead and do it in round eight. Like that. That's where I'd just be like, G give me Joe Burrow if he's sitting there, and I'll have the combo of the two. I have no problem with that. Like seven, eight, maybe six is not is too and, high. And you, There's a lot of talent in six still. And you think? I mean, I'm really high, yeah, and I'm high on AR like you are. You're high on Rasheed Rice next year, too, because, I mean, I think he's going to be a huge part of the offense. I am. I don't know if they're going to get a number one receiver in free agency. I, they could. They could, get, they could get Hopkins. They could get – so I am high on Rasheed Rice, but he's not a top of round two or mid round two guy for me. But you're getting him an insane yeah. value. You're fine. He's my but, last round. Yeah, but I don't, so I don't like nothing. where people are drafting him right now. He, he's him and him and Nico are going way too high. Nico's going at 2.1, 2.2, 2.3. I can't do that. I love yeah, Nico, but I can't crazy. do that. Yeah. Rasheed Rice, same thing. 2.2, 2.4, 2.3. It's too high. Uh, your second drafted mm -hmm. player, it can't be. It's the, you're you're loading up your team with a bunch of risk. All right, hang tight, uh, hang tight, uh, Aurora. Go over to Scuba, then the Bruce. Yep. Scuba, go. You're live. Hey, uh, Smitty, got a question for you. Yep. So, so uh, I know you're an Arizona guy. Uh, what are they? Uh, what are they saying? Are they saying that you're actually going to get Marvin Harrison Jr. 
And in terms of fantasy, if you do get Marvin Harrison Jr., how high are you going to uh, rank uh, Kyle Murray? Because it looks like towards the end of the season, he, he finished out pretty good as far as fantasy purposes. So you know, would, would you like that for your offense? Like, Where do you put Kyle Murray in, in terms of your tiers if you get some Marvin Harrison Jr.? I, I love Kyler Murray if he gets Marvin Harrison. I don't know that there's room to put him. He'd be the great player to take if you in, in uh, Aurora's question. You have AR5, and then Kyler's sitting there around 8 or 7 or whatever. Um, I, I think you could easily draft him as your starter. He's got top 6 quarterback capability. He doesn't rank inside my top 5 or 6 just because the QB pool is so deep. I find myself completely forgetting about Kyler when I'm doing like top 8 quarterback rankings. And then I'm like, oh crap, where do I put Kyler? And really, he floats naturally, de facto, 7, 8, 9, 10. You know, or even 8, 9, 10. He's not even in most people's top 7. And so, he's a, a tremendous value. You want to grab uh, Kyler and another player, call it JD5. Kyler and JD5. And then, that's similar to dra drafting a, another quarterback as your presumed starter and then drafting AR, AR5 last year and then being forced to start AR5 at some point. I think JD, JD5 and Kyler would be fantastic together. That's an unbelievable combo, and you're getting them both late. Uh, I, I think his value, Kyler's, goes up to potential top four to six. It could be. It, I, what, just would I draft him there? No. My expectation is going to be lower. I'm setting myself up for a little bit of maybe disappointment or maybe you know the Cardinals offense takes a while to get in a groove. As far as Marvin Harrison, there's very few better spots that he could go. Uh, do Man, I like I'll tell you this. In that best ball draft or whatever – that they have for that ten dollars for two million, I, I ended up drafting Patrick Mahomes at pick sixty three. Yeah, that, don't worry. Incoming video on that. Incoming video on Patrick Mahomes. He's a steal of the steal of best ball drafts right now. There's a I have a video on that. I, I, wait, I, I wait. got Kelsey and Rice, and nobody wanted Mahomes. Yeah, wait for, wait for it. Wait for it. There's snapped. no there's no bigger steal in fantasy football right now in best ball than Patrick Mahomes. Um, that video is upcoming. Right. But but to to the question, um, the only better scenario than uh, than than Arizona, Kyler Murray and Marvin Harrison Jr. The only better scenario in my mind is New England or Washington if they trade for Justin Fields and draft Marvin Harrison Jr. So if Marvin Harrison Jr. gets drafted to the Washington Commanders with Kingsbury's offense with Adam Peters building around the team and everything, Washington with Fields and Marvin Harrison Jr. Smash. New England drafts Marvin Harrison Jr. trades for Justin Fields, smash. Then Arizona's third. But if neither Washington or New England trade for Justin Fields, I like Arizona as the top spot for Marvin Harrison Jr. LAC is interesting. I like it, but I don't know that people are gonna love the flow of the offense fantasy wise as much as they think. I'm not saying it'll be garbage. I'm not saying Harbaugh hasn't done different types of uh, deployments of an offense. I'm not saying he didn't throw before a ton in his past uh, in San Fran or something like that. I'm not I'm not acting like he's going to just take Michigan's offense and just pull it right over, but this is the last thing he's known, the Michigan offense, and it has worked for him. You could say that he's probably going to have more balance than not. And so, you know, Herbert could be more efficient and look better, but will Marvin Harrison Jr. be better in LAC than he would AZ? I don't think so. Um, if Marvin Harrison Jr. went to Atlanta, um, <laughs> he's not. I'm just saying, like, if it, like that wouldn't be necessarily the best place either. There's a lot of mouse to feed. If he went to New York, that would be horrible because who's throwing the ball to him? But in a year or two, it could be good. Arizona, but it's horrible. Yeah, Tennessee, no thank you on Levis. And the Titans are going to be start folding. Uh, there's no better spot here. Like, if if the only other thing you could think of, I'm, I'm even looking at it, is like if let's say. Indy moved up to three or four and they don't franchise tag Pittman unless that happened when we've been live. Then all of a sudden, you know, you've got Pittman gone and, and AR5 throwing to Marvin Harrison Jr. That's comparable. But just give me Kyler. It's it's like it, there's nothing that needs to happen. It's it's perfect fit. Kyler's locked up. Um, Cardinals, I think, are building in the right direction. The Cardinals are crafty. Like, they may not have been a, a great football team last year, but they were constant dogs. Every time, it was like they almost pulled it off. They're just kind of hard to, hard to get through. Even the Niners said that. They're like, man, this team's just gritty. They're just gritty. And Ky yeah. Kyler really proved I, I was very hard on Kyler. Did not. He also. That's what you call them. He did not also. deserve the bag when they gave it to him. 
<laughs> All right, uh, let me go over to the Bruce real quick. Uh, Scuba, is that what your question? That was your only question. Uh, just one thing. Uh, you guys were touch, just touching on uh, that you want to get, uh, uh, get uh, Daniels to go to uh, Washington. If, if that does happen, how, how are you ranking uh, Terry McLaurin? Where, where do you feel comfortable drafting him? Because if, uh, especially if one of these guys actually end up becoming good, this, this is like the first time they'll actually have a quarterback. Where do you feel comfortable taking him? That's a tough question, man, to answer. I, I don't really know exactly where I'd take him. I'd say as my wide receiver, my late wide receiver two, if he's the star wide receiver and, and he would be, I think Dotson is going to be crafty with Kingsbury now, but like I'm talking about the like double digit rounds, like end of your draft, like no one's going to want Dotson. He burned everybody, but it would be, it'll be interesting to just throw him as one of your last wide receivers on your bench. Uh, as far as McLaurin, I think he's got one good year left before we start to panic and hold our breath every year. So McLaurin yeah. does have one good year left. He finally is going to get, I think an, a, a potentially elite QB, and, and I think he could easily be a wide receiver, too. Um, I definitely would not overdraft him. I'm not taking him in four or five or anything like that. But he does become a pretty solid wide receiver, two option for especially a team that waits to draft their wide receiver, two a little bit. Like your good value wide receiver, two. But, uh, you know, amazing wide receiver, three. But it'll be interesting to see how good McLaurin is. He's a very, very efficient receiver. His contested catch rate is always awesome. He's a fantastic receiver. He just hasn't really had a good offense, man. He's been he's been a victim, really, for, for this whole career. And part of it's like frustrating that now he might get the opportunity and maybe it takes time to develop the quarterback and then McLaurin can't do it anymore. So it's, it's really frustrating. Would, would, would you compare – do you think he put up the same type of numbers that DJ Moore was putting up, like when Justin Fields was – like? Do you, do you think that those guys would be comparable? Or do you think that he could do a little bit better than that? Possible, yes. But I think your expectation needs to be a lot lower and just hope that he can get you, like, I don't know, like 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns. Like, and I don't know what more finished with, but I'm saying, like, more in his prime of last year, you know, doing it all year long, no. But, like, could he get 1,100 or 1,200 yards and seven touchdowns with a rookie quarterback if it's 85 or May? I think he could. In a Kingsbury attack, I think he easily could. But th that's a good number. You know, that'll earn you your value back. And then it's like he's got a low floor then. Then McLaurin's a low floor player, easily going to earn his ADP value back, but has floor or ceiling for so much more. All right, hang tight, Scuba. The Bruce, you're live. Hey, hey, Smitty, I got a question. What do you say? What do you hear? Uh... If Seals goes to Atlanta, can you get a trifecta out of them? If they Fields goes dread. to Atlanta, I think get we'll have. Like I think we'll have. Yeah, I think we'll have another stack of pancake. I think an, maybe maybe. I don't want to say they take over the pancake stack, but yeah, maybe we do some sort of, you know, side by side by side. Burrow Chase double stack. Uh, uh, Fields London Pitts Bijan the quad stack. And then the Stroud, <laughs> Dell, and and uh, Collins triple stack like th four four different menu items, you know. If you want the the, the quad stack, you know, <laughs> you, you can get you can get whatever whatever kind of a pancake stack you want at this <laughs> Waffle House. Um, this, this guy, this is the best. JP, JP, <laughs> you're, you got to be kicking yourself that you walked away from this show for four months. You got to because JP's having the time of his I'm life. About it. I, I am. I, I watched it move. again and I was like, damn, I can't believe I missed out on this for yeah. that long. Oh, my yeah. goodness. It, it, I'm, it, so, I'm too judgmental sometimes. J J JP's, <laughs> like, uh, JP's like Matthew McConaughey and in Interstellar at the bookcase going, no, don't, don't. <laughs> and he's like, I don't like this song. I'm out of here. And he's like, don't go. <laughs> like Stay. <laughs> Don't do it. Don't That's do my it. favorite song, so turn it up. Jeez. Jeez, I got bro. one more for you. Go ahead, Eddie. Bruce. You know how the Vikings just signed, uh, who was it, Daniel's quarterback coach, Josh McCown? Yeah. Do you think they're do you think they're in on him and that's why they're trying to trade up? Be like, we got his quarterback coach. Uh maybe we need to trade up and get this guy because he already knows him. Yeah, I, tough to say. Um, you, you, you remember when uh, McCown, McCown doesn't? I don't know. I don't know what I feel of McCown. You know, part of me, part of me says don't judge McCown 
because he was in a horrible, impossible situation last year. Like, how, how is anybody going to succeed there? Um, and, and I don't even know if Stroud could have succeeded in Carolina himself, you know, at all. He, he might We might be looking at Stroud like we're looking at Young. Bryce Young, we don't know what he, we, what he is. Uh, but I, I don't know. I'm not reading too much into, the you know, does that turn this into that? You know, especially when McCown's not like, you know, I don't know. It, it's not like he's the head coach or something. You know, the, 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 like where McCown goes, he's not going to just get what he wants. But tough to say. Smitty, what's your opinion on like the NFL being fixed or rigged or all that kind of stuff? Um, I think that it would be ridiculous to think that it's rigged. I think could it be influenced or are there corrupt people or corrupt, you know, refs once in a while? Of course. I mean, we've seen it happen before. Um, right, exactly. Human beings are involved, and that, that enters potential corruption in anything. But, like, on a grand scale, no. Like, does the commissioner pick up the phone and talk to all the refs and go, okay, we need to get this to go this way? No. That, that, that would get, that the cat would be out of the bag so quick. Uh, people <laughs> would fold and, and, and admit that, and payoffs would go wrong, and nothing like that could stay quiet. But is there a ref that's got. You know, somebody in Vegas has got a strong arm on them, and they're like, you're doing this, and you're like, sure. I mean, anything like that could happen. But, so, look, there's so many moving parts, too. Like, can you imagine how many times somebody tried to mess up a game, and they couldn't, and then they like, you know what I mean? Like, it's a lot harder than it sounds. Yeah. Um, yeah. Especially the way karma is, and the, the ball never lies. You played football on the... On the streets when you were, you know, 15, 16 years old, you couldn't cheat if they said, oh, were you out? And you said, yeah, he was out. And he wasn't out. The ball wouldn't lie. They'd score on the next play no matter what. The ball wouldn't lie. Um, I, I don't think it's as easy as you think. Not to mention, like, there was a couple times where KC, like, during that game, the refs could have went the other way. Like, on that potential... Uh, fumble and and you know there were a couple of touchback spots for kansas city too where it was like you know as yeah. people were like it's rigged for the chiefs i'm like are you not watching the game i mean yeah. i counted at least three bad spots for them so yeah and i know there's a lot of holding and all that but like you know i did anybody notice that on uh, like during the game no it was all slow motion later you know there weren't i, I was i was watching the entire game and i know that the camera was off some of the line but like i never saw half of the things that were being pointed out in the and you know to my niner fans i love you to pieces you know that i'm not against any <laughs> fan base i'm here for you but like the niner fan base needs to like swallow their pride on this one and move forward they're doing exactly what the eagles fans did last year and the niner fans roasted them for it cry eagles cry cry eagles yeah, cry I'm the niner eagles fans fan, need to let go of it. it's not a good look I'm an Eagles fan, Smitty. I'm sorry to interrupt, but you're totally right. I mean, that McCaffrey touchdown, it was a great play design by Shanahan, too. But there was holding on that play. Nobody brought that up. So yeah. it was like, I mean, San Francisco Andrew. fans, it's not just them. It's just, you know, at, at a certain point, I'm hearing so much of the NFL is rigged. And I'm like, I don't think this is coming from any justifiable and, and, fans. That, Andrew became you know. a, thank you. Andrew became an exclusive member right now. Uh, Andrew said he changed his avatar for me. Uh, what did you change your avatar to, Andrew? Let me see. Let me let me pull it up and zoom in. Um, Andrew, appreciate you becoming a, a member, my guy. You got Venmo, Smitty, or no? Do I got what? You got Venmo? I do. Okay. Well, how come you don't post that up? Uh, it might be in the description of the video. Why wow, you want to send me a Ven? Uh, you want to send me a Venmo? Yeah, I'd Venmo. Yeah, I mean okay, that's, okay. that's how I transact. Yeah, yeah. Smitty at <laughs> Smitty at the fantasy Smitty at the fantasy football show dot com. Let's see. Let's see what he sends me. Smitty at the fan. All right. Let, let's let, on, let's pull a vent. Let's see what K K Karen's Karen's working out. I gotta say, Karen's here. I gotta Karen's say, noise. I gotta say, Karen. <laughs> I gotta say, Karen's stock is up. Stock on the road. <laughs> I gotta say, All Karen's, right, go. Karen's stock is on the rise. Smitty at the now fantasy well. foot the fantasy football show dot com. Uh, let me just confirm it real quick. Hold on before you send it to Steve. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, that's it. I think I found it. Oh no, you know what? It's, it's, it's I'm, so, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's just thefantasyfootballshow.com. There's no. It's not an email address. Okay. The fantasy football. There it is. Spell it right, Karen. <laughs> it's gonna be. T- I'm trying. It's I'm gonna trying. be T E H. I sent ten thousand dollars to T E H. No, it's the T H E, Karen. <laughs> I see it. All right. At the Fantasy Football Show, show. right? Headphone logo. Headphones. There you go. Let's see what he's let's see what he's sending here, folks. I, I'm I, gonna I, send you I'm gonna send you just what I pay on just you know a, a little pound? bit of a bill here. So here I'll put a little gift here. So order yourself uh You got you're buying dinner tonight? Marshawn Lynch <laughs> is pew pew. You're buying dinner tonight. Let's, hold let's, on, hold on. Yeah, I'm going to order you a pizza, man. This is enough to get you some pizza, some breadsticks. There you Bre- go. Sensitive. Jeez, what's he doing here? JP. JP, we got just the, the number for you. $50 holler, JP. $50. There you go. Give me $50. Oh, hold on. We got to get the new, the old song up. Give <laughs> me Super <laughs> <laughs> there it is. All right. Oh, hey, I, pre- I appreciate you, bro. Okay, let me go back around. Look, look at JP, aka Karen, doing doing it live. Look, this guy, this guy called in. This guy That's called in to try and be it, a bro. hater. You, you admit it. You called in kind of to try and be a hater, kind of, a little bit. You're like, let me give you. Oh, well, I didn't try. I was just kind of quit. Have you ever seen Steve where they say pop quiz a hole? I don't want to curse on your show. Yeah. I respect you. So, pop you quiz. know, just saying it like it is. Pop quiz. He called in and said, pop quiz on your Justin Fields take. And all of a sudden, this guy's, you're right, Justin Fields to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. All right. Hey, let's go over to I, uh, let's go over to Aurora. You got any follow-ups before I kick you off the phone line? I've uh, been live for, two, uh, let's see, an hour and 30 minutes. We're going to come back tonight on the Dynasty channel. I don't know if JP knows the links are in the description, the Dynasty channel, the Rumble channel. We'll be back on the <laughs> Dynasty channel at least. Uh, appreciate you, uh, no, uh, Karen. Thank you. Go ahead, Aurora. That's no, Karen. Thank you for my brother. Uh, nothing for me. Uh, you know, it's not 50. I just graduated from college, so I just sent you $5 on here. Uh, shit. It's, uh, wait, hold on. No, you sent Pay 50. without confirming. So. Yeah, I just sent you five bucks, so you can take my AT and T uh, shit they just gave me uh, the other day because of their outage. So there's a five dollars from AT and T. Wait, what? <laughs> Wait, so you sent? I sent you on Venmo five bucks. JP, I see fifty. You sent fifty. That's me. No, I just sent... no, no, no. no. Aurora. I sent five. Oh, Aurora. Okay, I'm sorry. You guys sound kind of alike, and, and no offense, uh, Karen interrupts a lot. <laughs> so I thought that was Karen talking. Aurora sent $5. Like a Karen. Karen. Yes, it's oh. as simple as that. He sounds like a Karen. <laughs> I might not call him again now. Per, per, okay. <laughs> who, who's not calling in again? Aurora. He loves you. He's playing. He's okay. just messing around. Aurora, you. Aurora, I'm sorry. Aurora, go. Uh, I'm sorry, man. Thank you for sending me the five dollar hurl. No, you're, you're you're good, man. Uh, I didn't understand the AT and T thing though. They, you didn't hear about AT and T. It doesn't matter. They just had like an outage the other day, so they uh, sent like five dollars to people who got affected. Yeah. But, hey, yeah, consider it from AT and T. Okay. Thank you, Aurora. Appreciate you, bro. I didn't know why you said you jump off the yep. f- or you weren't going to call in again though. What was that joke? I didn't get it. No, it was because I. You said I sounded like Karen. So oh, like, oh. Oh shit. Well, yeah. I, I no, guess. Well, <laughs> I guess don't I take. Get humiliated don't like take that. Again, that so. Don't take that the wrong way. Karen definitely sounds like JP, yeah, but the wrong way. it's it's more about the attitude. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, 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 Perps dropping a hundred on the on the on the Venmo. Perps is like. I want in on this. I'm dropping a hundred dollar <laughs> holler. Let's go, perps. Alert. Super chat. There we go. Hype it up. Who's gonna uh, perps though? That's what I want to know. Who's gonna do at least 101? <laughs> perps. We got a hundred from perps, five from Aurora, uh, 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 JP, AK Karen. 
Maybe we give JP. I'll give you the opportunity. Do you want JP back, or are you good with Karen? I'm good with Karen. It don't matter. <laughs> you me, don't, you you're like Bill the Tickler. You're like Bill the Tickler. I gave Bill the Tickler his name, which is just a creepy name, and and he. <laughs> I gave him the opportunity to change it. He's like, nope. You gave me the name. I want it. And I'm like, okay, you know. <laughs> I think I remember that guy actually. <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know what else to to say when I try. But it was funny because when Aurora said he threw five dollars down, it confused me because I thought it was Karen. Uh, and Aurora hung up. Aurora, <laughs> Aurora wasn't kidding when he said he wasn't going to call in again. He just he just deuced out. Aurora, appreciate you. I thought Aurora was Karen saying, "I messed up. I mean to send you five. <laughs> and then I refreshed and saw five. I'm like, "Oh, okay." I, I can't buy a whole pizza pie and breadsticks with the five dollars, but I, I was like that. Aurora, appreciate you. Appreciate you. Aurora to the moon. Aurora, call back in if, if, if so I can say bye to you and appreciate you one more time. If you can. If you're not, no problem. Uh, Purpose, appreciate you. All right. Uh, la final thoughts, Bruce. Purpose is a monster. It's such a fun show. All right, I got one for you. You're I got, I got your Mrs. Robeson the other day. You got, you got Mrs. Robeson what? I, I tricked her. You tricked her. How'd you trick I your mom? Because you know she wants Fields a lot in Atlanta because she's a Falcons fan. Yeah, she's smart. So I told her. I told her, I said, you got field. She said, we did. I said, yeah. Oh. But you gave up London. You gave up oh. Kent. You gave up B. John Robinson. Oh, and bro. she was almost... She was almost in tears. Oh, bro. That's like one of those TikToks and where then, they say somebody passed away that didn't. And they're like... You're like, you know, George Clooney. Oh, my God. And then the people are like, what? No! No! <laughs> you should have recorded that, Bruce. That could have been killer I content. Bruce, you it missed. You been. dropped the ball. That was amazing. Con can you do the? Can you do it on your pops? Who's your pops' team again? My pops is the Giants. Dude, so you, I tried to tell him like, tell maybe you lost Barkley, and he says, "Yeah, I know." He says, "But hey, he ain't gonna pay him what he wants anyway." Tell him, tell him they they uh, they're bringing Sam Darnold in, and they traded away the, the first round pick. And, and see see what he said. Or Jimmy G. Does he like Jimmy G? I know I know you you like Jimmy G, right? Does he like Jimmy G? Uh okay, no, no, he's a Baker fan. Okay. I'm so. a Jimmy G fan because I said, listen, I said and this is why I said and people laugh, I says, Well listen, if you're Jimmy G and you're partying with porn stars, who wouldn't want to party with porn stars? Yeah. Right, family show, Bruce. Hey, hey, Bru hey. Bruce. Bruce, trick your pops. Send me the video clip. We'll put it on here. Appreciate you for for doing it live. Um, your mom's your mom's is still the most knowledgeable. Put your, put your earmuffs on real quick, Bruce. Your mom's Miss Robeson is still the most knowledgeable football mind I've ever come across inside a family uh, uh, that loves football, and we appreciate her very much. Um, Bruce, anything else? Yeah. No, that was it. That I got my hey, mom, hey, hey, and I forgot hey, to record it. Hey, Bruce. Um, Clip this right now. Everybody watching, this is complete fake news. Do not get upset over this. Okay, Bruce, ready? Clip this. This just in. The Giants have traded their first round pick, and they're going to bring in Sam Darnold to quarterback the team moving forward. I don't know, kind of a head scratcher, but uh, it was inevitable that the Giants were going to trade out of the first round. Um, we'll be back in a short minute. Cl that, was, that was fake news. That was fake news. Bruce, clip that and play that for your dad. All uh, right. <laughs> and I want can you play He's that can, can you play that and record yeah I, I can do it I can't do it now but okay uh, or on my phone, like on your iPad or okay film it maybe your mom will get but in my, on this maybe your mom will get in on this to kind of get a little revenge on him uh but but play that you know clip it so that you don't hear me laughing after or make sure you pause it quickly but I want his reaction I want him to throw his hat down and go damn it all right. He's already pissed off that they paid Danny Dimes. Yeah, well, you should be. Your, your dad sounds like a smart man as well. All right, hey, uh, we'll see you later, Bruce. Bruce, take it easy. Per, uh, uh, Scuba, final thoughts, real quick. Hey, uh, Smitty, uh, I was reading it up on this. Uh, uh, it's been a while since I've been uh, on the show, so I don't know if you ever touched on this. But uh, the GM of the Seattle Seahawks said that uh, – 
you know Smith will be the starter until he's not. So I don't know if that means yeah. that they're going to attack like the, somebody in the draft. But I wonder how, how uh, it, it's going to affect like the offensive weapons, like the wide receivers, like Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, uh, and like JSN. Because I, I remember in Tampa Bay, like we thought that the offense was going to stink, and Baker Mayfield ended up having these guys somewhat fantasy relevant. Do you think that's going to be the case with like those guys, or? Is that just like a wait and see approach thing? Like, are you fine with like missing out on those guys? Like, how how, uh, how do you want to handle something like that? Uh, you know, it's a good point. Um, it, it, it's a good good point that like we thought Baker was gonna do bad and he didn't. Um, so that that's a that's a really 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 good point. Um, but at the end of the day, I think um, I, I think what they're gonna do is draft Penix Jr. at 16 overall. Uh, but yeah, we did cover this extensively on the other show. Uh, Seahawks general manager John Schneider said that QB Dino Smith will be the starter until he's not. That that to me makes me feel that at 16 overall they're drafting Penix Jr. Now why Penix Jr.? Because Ryan Grubb, the new OC in Seattle, is his offensive coordinator from Washington. So as soon as they brought the Washington offensive coordinator over to Seattle... And Penix Jr. is going to go probably in this territory. And if he if he slips past Seattle, he may not go in the first round at all because this is like no quarterback zone, right? These are all playoff contending teams that have quarterbacks. Pitt, Pittsburgh, maybe. Um, uh, Miami, maybe. You know, maybe they want a, a backup of these plans that they got going on. But Seattle is like the end of that rainbow anyway of, of quarterback drafting in the first round. And there's a real good chance they draft Penix Jr. because of Ryan Grubb. So uh, I think Geno Smith, if he's in that situation, isn't starting past midseason. If that, um, I, I, that's not a, it's not a ringing endorsement. He'll start until he doesn't. You know. All right, Scuba, appreciate you. Yeah, no, no problem, man. I think I said I was just curious about like DK Metcalf and everything because I mean, like some of these guys, some of these guys, but like uh, especially DK last year, I, I thought he wasn't gonna. He was going to have, like, a good season, and he ended up, like, playing good. Now, I just don't know if, if, if like, the value is with those guys or if it's going to be with, like, a JSN. You know, I, I really uh, love I love the idea of Geno being one of the best backups in the National Football League in this situation. Like, if I'm the Seattle Seahawks, it's not a mistake to move forward uh, with Geno like they did and retain him and pay him all the money. He's an expensive backup if they do go down the road of a, of a Bo Nix or a Penix Jr. or a McCarthy. Um, or they bring in another quarterback like that. I mean, they could bring in Cousins or Fields or trade for Justin Fields or, or whatever. Uh, it's possible, but I think that they, they're probably pretty comfortable with Dino for one year, and then if at 16 the right opportunity presents itself, they don't feel like they put themselves at risk waiting for it. I, I, I love Penix Jr. in Seattle with his former OC, his the OC he just had. At Washington, mm-hmm. you know th- that's a, such an amazing pairing, and I think it, uh, I think it's it it, it puts a, a security blanket around DK and JSN and Kenneth Walker and Zach Charbonnet because you have two quarterbacks there instead of just Geno. You know, if they don't I go, expect the same fantasy points from both. That's just my personal opinion. Like if Geno Smith plays a game and then Pitt plays a game with this, like the Seahawks, I think they're gonna throw up the like the same exact point. Yeah. Uh, Gavin became a member. Gavin to the moon. Thank you. If anybody else wants to be a YouTube exclusive member, all you got to do is hit that join button on the YouTube channel, um, or or you can click on the memberships tab. And this is coming in as a twenty dollar gifted membership from Perps. Oh, Perps doing it live. Perps, what do you want, Arnold? Uh, 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 the the Donald, Mike Tyson, old school twenty dollar hauler, new school Denny twenty dollar hauler. You be the you be the judge. Uh, Karen, Karen, any any final thoughts, Karen? Perps, appreciate you. Perps, everybody give Perps a standing ovation. Everybody. Yeah, I like the request. I like it how you're requesting it. That's, I mean, it's really that's that's pretty attractive. So that, that's customization. Like that. It's customization. <laughs> hey, hey, and Karen, thank you so much for the. Know? Thank you so much for the fifty dollar hauler. Uh, we appreciate you. You definitely call in more often. Uh, any final thoughts from you before you leave? Uh, 
as purposes gifts I'll everybody. do that and uh, no I don't have any final thoughts I think it's just uh, amazing how you got your show going and yeah. you're popping off and you're doing what you do and I like how like in the middle of a, a no season you call it smoke season and I never even called it that before but I love it All and right. now I call it smoke season so I don't know if you made that up but now I'm on board so I'm in that boat too, and that's how we're gonna just like float right. on, my brother. Awesome, man. Float on, float pre- on, float on, like that song. <laughs> we got it. So hey. I, 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 I'm out of here. All right, Have Karen. Good night. Later, Karen. Later. Later. Appreciate you. Later. Karen. Karen. Karen's stock is up, ladies and gentlemen. I'm not gonna lie. Stock on the rise. That's how you do it. That's how you recover. Like Mark B, who lost his Bijan card. That, Kind of a way you can easily get a Bijan card back is, is play it like that. This guy came in playing a bad hand. He folded the hand, drew a new new hand, and played it in magnificent fashion. Uh, Perps, uh, did Perps say what he wanted? Okay. Perps to the moon. Thank you, Perps. Perps to the fr- Perps to Saturn. To be frank. To be frank. Uh, that's all she wrote for tonight. We'll be back for a Dynasty show. Uh, uh, Karen, JP, make sure you're subscribed to the Dynasty channel. The links are in the description. I'm also going to drop the Dynasty channel one time in the live chat right now. So if you are not subscribed to the Dynasty channel, make sure you jump on over to the Dynasty channel. Let me see if I can find that link real quick. Here we go. Dynasty uh, channel link right here. Boom. Um, don't forget to subscribe to the Rumble channel. Those links are both in the description, though. But here, here is the two links back to back in the live chat. So, anybody that's not subscribed to both those channels, we go live on those channels and di- you know for different shows. Um, this is the main channel. This is the main event. We're here doing it live. I don't know what Perp said, so I'm going to give Perps a standing ovation on this one. Perps, appreciate you. What a show. What a show. See you all tonight. 81 of you in here. Um, I wanted to call it something else, but this is a family show. What did Perp say? Let me look for it. Let me see if I can find it. Perp said, Andrew, I want Karen. How do you like mashed potatoes? Uh, I second that. Uh, Perps, Perps. uh, Perps, okay. I don't know. Perps, if I missed where you said it, I'm sorry. Uh, Perps got a standing ovation. Perps the freaking moon. Perps dropping the $20 haulers. Perps dropping 20 gifted memberships. Please give Perps your thanks via fire emoji, thumbs up, uh, a peace sign, uh, hang loose, or eggplant. Whatever you feel expresses your feelings and gratitude toward Perps for dropping 20 gifted memberships on everybody. Crop dusting people with memberships like it's not a, not even a big thing is what he does. I'm going to have to converse a little side... I'm going to have to conserve a little side cash to Super Chat Smitty. I uh, need my Bijan card back. Your Bijan card has been revoked. We're holding it. We're holding it. Uh, appreciate you all. We'll see you later tonight on the Dynasty channel. Possibly Rumble as well. Legend has it, if you say St. Brown three times in the dark in the bathroom, you will immediately lose your league. We interrupt this program to bring you a special message from the Bruce's mother. Get Bijan. Bijan. Super chat alert. Beast Hall is eight foot tall. He will always answer the mother freaking call. Don't let him fall. In the third, don't stall. Just give Batman the freaking football. He's brief. He's brief. He does a whole of a job. 
A hull of a job. A hull of a job. Grease Hall, please report to the moon. He does. Yep, I, I, I finally saw people say that, so that's why I gave you that little dance right there. Purpose of the Moon, thank you, Purpose. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. Old school's back. Old school's back. That That's on request of uh, of Karen, and Karen wasn't wrong. A lot of people wanted the old school back. Denny's there by request if anybody wants it, but it's not the, the normal. I'll see you all tonight. Appreciate you. Revenge Tour! Revenge Venge Tour!